Hello, and thank you for watching the Hobo and His Girlfriend yeah. Wrestling Podcast or Wrestling YouTube Show. I don't know. One day I'll figure out podcasts. Make some real money, I guess. My name is Hobo Tom. My girlfriend is taking photography classes, trying to get better, advance herself. Always a good thing. I'm here to talk a little bit about Raw, but before I do that, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. Uh, a couple news features or kind of updates. I'd like to thank Christine for being a new subscriber. I have a video just for you at the end of this show. Also, if you did not know, I finally hit the perfect 10 subscribers. So yesterday I had my perfect 10 WrestleFest where you had the six faces of Tom. You had Hobo Tom, Broke, uh, Tom Von Break, Dr. Keller, Evil Tom, Corporate Tom, and Old Tom. We're off in the ladder match. Again, that was all to see something that at the end of the night, or end of the show, then you had the Battle of the Brothers Keller in a steel cage, the bestest ever girlfriend champion championship match between Princess Ikochi and Mr. Heather, and you had Aiden Awesome versus Crazy Liam, and then finally the culmination. We have the new Under the Bridge champion. To see who won that championship, you have to go online. And my channel again is kind of like the one WWE 2K17 game. Also on Thursday, you might have a chance to see me. Hobo Tom, not in this shirt, but you'll know what t-shirt I'll wear. At the Multicultural Center here in Daytona Beach, because Annex coming to town. Just got my ticket. I'm going to the show, baby. So let's talk a little bit about Raw. Let's talk about what I'm supposed to be talking about. Raw was... It was odd. Because I know it was the, the show after the main event or the pay per view. It wasn't really that many recaps. So it wasn't recap heavy. It wasn't good though. It was, it was weird. So let's start off. And Kurt comes out, starts to almost shoot on Brock Lesnar. He says, I'm going to strip you of the title if you don't make a sprint. Oh, also, in the news, Masa Saito, unfortunately, passed away. Moment of silence. I want to say he wrestled with the Orient Express under Mr. Fuji. Again, I always kind of start to hear when wrestlers. I, I want to say, I don't know the exact cause, but I, I think it's those, those natural causes. Again, He's been around for a while. I want to say, I think he passed it like in the 70s, maybe early 80s. 80s so, As, un, 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 unfortunately, he did pass. Fortunately, I guess you could say it was a normal passing. Unlike a Rick Rude who passed away way too soon. And you can go through a whole litany list of wrestlers that probably passed way before. They should have. Well, let's again back get back to Raw. Then you have Kurt, As Kurt, Kurt Angle shooting on Brock Lesnar. I'm gonna strip you of your title if you don't come out to wrestle on for SummerSlam. Paul Heyman comes out. Then why Brock's there? Brock wants to be the <coughs> two belt champion. Again, kind of appeals to Kurt's pass. And then Heyman was getting booed. First time I've heard of it. Then Bobby Lashley came out, got a promo, recapped Extreme Rules about how he beat Roman Reigns. The crowd cheered for that. Drew Galloway came out, Seth came out, Elias came out, Finn Balor came out. Roman Reigns came out to acquire booze. So then there's going to be the, the setup for the triple, three triple threat matches. 
Eh, it was okay. Oh, yes. I love people who have signs. Hi, Harley. Good to see you. Um, so the first triple threat match was Drew McIntyre versus Roman Reigns versus Finn Balor. And it was okay. I mean, Finn's really... He's really beginning to become the master of the roll-up. He's really winning, and he does the roll-up a lot. I know every so often you'll see wrestlers do it. I've never seen people do as many roll-ups as Finn Balor, though. It was a really good first match. I mean, the super, did have the superstar quiet? It was a really quiet crowd, though. It was weird. Again, this match, because of its qualities, and I'll go over some of them. The cheeseburger. Burgers are good. This match was good. And I think that's the highest rating I give this whole card, or this whole show. Again, we also we had uh, Silver Balor. Again, he's the, this is a high-flying Balor. For a while, I thought Drew could win. I mean, he was just tossing Finn Blow around, taking what Roman could give, and, and dishing some out, stuff out. Again, Drew even flies over the ropes. Amazing. Oh, then there were chair shots. The crowd starts going crazy once the chair, chairs come out. And it was kind of fun. Again, remember in the triple threat match, there is no DQ. I mean... Well, Roman Reigns won, but he like cut himself really weird. Because at the end of the match, you could see like, blood coming on, like, the, like... I think during the spear, he, he must have clipped it, like the side of his head against Finn Blower's elbow. Or, so something really weird. It's it wasn't a it wasn't a planned juicing. What wasn't a blade job? It was well well it was a juice the hard way. I don't I don't think he meant that. Again, when Finn Blower was doing good, you were too sweet. Ooh, ooh. And the next segment, Kurt and Bailey. Someone's getting to back down. Yeah. It, it, it does get weirder, though, and we'll hear about that later on the show. Again, I'd like to say hello to everyone from Cultaholic. When you guys came to Orlando, you guys actually talked to me. That means you, Jack the Jobber. You, number one in my book. So, again, Dolph came out, kind of, again, kind of recapped things. Um, Bobby Roo came out and. New Japan Pro Wrestling Style Challenge. I challenge you for the title. Dolph said, eh, you're going to challenge me. But it's not for the title. It was, it was an okay, but it was a slow match. Something just seemed off with the crowd. They were quiet. And that's weird. And again, it was a slow match. And it was good, fun. But it was a ham sandwich match. A ham sandwich is a good sandwich. Bad. But then, okay. Just really slow. When you had Tyler Breeze versus Mojo Rally, things just go south from here. And again, the Mojo's talking in the ring is good. This was really just a glorified squash match. Uh, Tyler Breeze digging in a couple moves. This was a can of soup match. I mean, eh, it's, a, it's a can of soup. It's, it's better than toast. It's nourishing. Braun came out. He gave a great promo. I just wanted to congratulate Kevin Owens on winning the Steel Cage match, even though I threw him from the top of the ring. <laughs> I mean, it was just good. I mean, Kurt and everyone was, was saying, it's like, oh, Braun, how come you didn't insert yourself before? I have my brief briefcase, which gives me a contract anytime, anywhere. So he at least explains it. He gives good purpose and good reasoning for his motivations. Why should I get involved? Let those mucks fight for it. I have a guaranteed contract. Whatever the, Whatever they say. Then you had the next match. You had Sasha Banks and Bailey versus 
forget her first name. Dana Brooks and Alicia Fox. That sounded terrible. Alicia Fox. That in, in my worst OM Dar voice. This was a can of soup match. You know, it was, it was okay. I, mean, I still think Bailey is turning heel. But, oh, Bailey, you need to wear a bra or more padding. Get to those chilly arenas. Just think about that. And again, Bailey, it was good to one point where, where Bailey got a little vicious and was becoming a heel. Again, she has the, bl the black wrist wrap. Again, if you're white, you're, you're a face. If you're black, you're a heel. And this was just really a weird match. Again, so you have Banks and Bailey. Again, maybe we'll see something in the summer. Then you have the B team versus the Ascension. Again, this, this was an okay match. I mean, here we go. Here's, here's our ham sandwich. It's kind of going right across the screen so everyone knows what a ham sandwich looks like. And again, also, if you saw my live stream, I'll just plug my live stream very quickly. My live stream stuff, I think it's about three hours long. I couldn't see the whole pay per view from one side of the screen. You had kind of all the matches listed. In the middle, saw so this ugly face. And on the other side, the right hand side, you saw all the comments. And thank you, Christine, for subscribing during that. Again, just wait till the end to get to hear a special message from Kenny Omega. Just for you, Christine. Well, again, you had the B team versus Ascension. I mean, it was an okay tag team match. I mean, the thing, again, they had fast tags, so they showed continuity. This was just a fast match. Again, when you saw the little icon go across the screen, oh, pistachio oh, coming up. It was okay. I have a question for everyone out there. And this goes back a little bit to this match. Because, again, the B team won, and they started to go crazy with their celebrating. What was a better table, a post-show show table spot? Either for Talking Smack or this pay-per-view. Was it Bo Dallas? Sliding down the table, or when Ms. and Maurice was making out on the table for a talking snack and left Renee just feeling very awkward. You decide, let me know. I'll let you know what I think about that. The other thing, I mean, Corey Graves, he's all done with the Woken Universe. He's funny. And then you have some recaps. You had an Alexa Bliss promo. Ronda got her hairstyle and her UFC fighting style with all the braids. And it was... It was okay. Um, I forget if it's this point or the next point. Somewhere. I'll do the next point. Because again... <coughs> you have the Authors of Pain versus Titus Worldwide. This was a can of suit match. So... I mean, really, this was just a glorified squash match. I mean, the only thing I can say is that I guess they're saving the Super Collider for, like, real matches. Getting a can of soup. I mean, you don't get these name problems. Like, Tom, no cells. Resort, no cells. I mean, just a squash match. I think at this point... They went backstage to cut to Sasha, Banks, and Bailey. And this is where things kind of got a little weird there. Where Sasha Banks, and I don't remember the exact words, but, but says, no one's allowed to beat you up, Bailey, except for me. 
well, Sasha Banks. And because Sasha Banks and Bailey did lose via disqualification, and that thing, like, if anyone's, if anyone's going to beat at Bailey, it's going to be Sasha Banks. And the reason is because Sasha Banks loves her? Indeed. I just hope it's not some ridiculous lesbian angle because WWE have, haven't done that in a while. And I know Boo Sonya Deville is of that affiliation. And the way the WWE has done this in the past is never good. It's entertaining for like the first couple times, but then they just kind of drag it out. And you don't want to see this, trust me. Or at least you don't want to see way too much of it. You don't want overload. So again, it was okay. Again, it was weird. Like, I'm the only one to beat you up. I'm the only one who gets to beat you up. That's because if you haven't figured it out, Bailey, it's because I love you. And Bailey's confused. The audience is confused. Sasha Banks is confused. Maybe they're saving it for SummerSlam. I think that's in the Barclays Center up in New York. So I know they had a tremendous takeover event there. <sighs> we'll see. That's all you can say. Then you had Ember Moon versus Sarah Logan. And this, this was okay. I mean, Logan still has to get her in ring timing down. You just can't approach the ring. Can't approach the ring and, and jump in right away. You have to approach the ring, stop. He's a jump in. Jump back out. Go back out. And then jump in. You just, you just can't go, 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 go running in and say, yeah, 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 yeah. And that's a terrible diagram, by the way. But again, this is a hobo production. So again, she's also got a ring timing down on <laughs> entering the ring. Um, I guess Sarah Logan started picking up fashion advice from Ro, I think, part of War Raiders. I know one of the two is her boyfriend. And she started painting her Viking warrior, and she went from Kentucky backwoods woman to, to Viking person. I don't like it when, when there's really no good explanation of why you switch characters. Like I understand go the whole Goldust persona constantly switches. Um, I think a few others have switched back and forth. The Undertaker did a couple times from the original Undertaker to the American Badass. That's because the original Undertaker died. And then he came back to be like a hybrid Badass, American Badass, Undertaker person. So it, it works for some, but eh. You have to explain it more a little bit. Um, Ember Moon. One of these days, he's going to have a wardrobe malfunction. It won't be up top. it will be down there, folks. He's going to have a V-shot one day. <laughs> Things I can get away with saying with, without my beautiful, most amazing girlfriend present. That was an okay match. Yeah, this was another kind of ham sandwich. Another ham sandwich? So again, this really wasn't that great of a show. They did have a lot of wrestling, which is good. Not a lot of recaps, but I don't know. The matches were bad. It looked like they were tossed together. It looks like all the wrestlers were like still half asleep. Then you have the f and against Sarah Logan one. Again, she's the only one to her moon between the three of them, I think. Between Ruby Riot, Liv Morgan, and Liv Morgan's tongue was back to being blue. Smurf blue color, too. Then you have the main event. You had Elias versus Seth Rollins versus Bobby Lashley. And this was actually really fun. I mean, Elias can run down a crowd. Elias is amazing in the fact that he can run down a crowd and still get the crowd to pop for him at the same time almost. 
Well, not, not at the same time exactly. Because that disobeys the laws of physics. But again, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, this was fun. I mean, Elias jumps Seth from behind at the start of the match. Again, Elias takes advantage of the no DQ rule. He does the things a heel is supposed to do. And Bobby Lashley comes in. Elias is opportunistic against Rollins. And for a while, Rollins is zero factor. And then, when you take a look at it, Elias is like a bigger, more jacked version of Seth Rollins. And Seth has amazing chain wrestling skills. Bobby Lashley is kind of one of the powerful, kind of strong style, very very physical face, face, baby face. Whereas Elias is just the, the the heel who takes advantage of stuff. It was a cheeseburger. And cheeseburgers are good. Yeah, there was some yay boo chance. I mean, the problem is, and this might be a really minor problem, but it just sets up for a Lashley versus Reigns match, which is what we just saw. And that was raw. It was okay. Again, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And this video goes out to you, Christine. And have a good night, and tomorrow I'll early I'll put up my Smackdown reactions. Tomorrow night I'll put up my Lucha Underground reactions. Have a good night everyone. Or morning, depending where you are. Bye. God. But heck. None of this would have been possible without this guy's unbridled support and endless pockets. This guy paid out the bum hole to get all of us here. So give a big thanks to Mr. Alex Javier. I'm also going to thank my very special partner in crime, Busa. He hates planes, he hates traveling, but when he heard that this show was important to me, he made the flight out just for you people. And my very good friend, one of my best friends in the entire planet, Haley, all the way from Thailand, Michael Nagazawa, give it up for the Mac. And even though I said some disparaging things of my Japanese brethren. This entire car couldn't have been possible if they didn't believe in our vision. So please, thank all of the New Japan roster and everyone that supported this vision. If you will, Alex. I don't have many words to say, but please guys, not, what did you guys think of the show tonight? This honestly, you know, is a community effort. I have a present for you too. I need Ryan to run that up right now. But until then, give it up please. I know we ran behind guys. We actually built the arena in 12 hours today. So get up to the production team. Give it up to 10 L Productions and FGC and Esports Production Team for putting on an amazing wrestling show. And most of all, guys, we would not have been here if it wasn't for each and every one of you that wanted this to happen. Kenny, for making it happen. For all these coming. So I want to present to these two guys my champions of the night. A very special CEO Cross New Japan Pro Wrestling Championship belts. Deserve it.
but alas, I must bid you all adieu. Don't worry, I'll be here all weekend. So, for now, and if you want to see us play some Fire Pro Wrestling, catch us tomorrow at 2 p.m., I believe. It's time to say uh, goodbye.